Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is a day, but right now it's time for a new Production Basics lesson. And just to clarify, the Production Basics series is all about um, commonly asked questions about really level, like beginning, super green, ultra noob questions about production, which everyone has had at some point, but um, I'm mostly making these as a resource to kind of send people when when I, when I they're asking me, you know, same same questions over and over again, and to have a sort of a... A resource for that. Anyway, um, today is going to be about song structure and how songs are structured. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of show, I'm going to give like an abstract presentation of like how you, how certain, like how songs are arranged. And then I'm also going to show you a real life example of a song that I've, I've made that followed this sort of idea. Um, so this idea of EDM song structure is actually specifically for EDM song structures because regular, quote unquote, regular songs, um, like more more vocal based like pop songs regular rock kind of thing they they have their own sort of structural dynamics which are similar very very similar to how these songs work but they're slightly different for example they usually call it the chorus and not the drop but um uh yeah so let's talk about it so i'm, I'm going to sort of but the, these the, what i'm what i'm going to tell you is mostly a guideline it's to give you is to give much like the idea of music theory in general is to give you an idea of where to go and where to start when you have none yourself. If you don't really know what you're doing going in, so that you can kind of just do stuff until you do have an idea of what you're doing, and then you can you know have your own spin on things. Um, anyway, the way that most most of these things work is that stuff is broken up into 16 bar segments. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be 16 bars of four four, but whatever measure length you're doing, 16 bars is usually the norm. Um, you can look at most songs and you'll see, you'll see the, the sort of the pattern that I'm about to show, show for how it goes. Sometimes there are deviations and deviations are cool. You can do that. You can do, you can do these things, but this is sort of like, well, this will be the most basic example of this kind of stuff. So, uh, first you got an intro. <laughs> Intros and outros can, are kind of like a lawless wild west kind of thing. You can do whatever really you want. Um, the first thing that tends to matter when it comes to sizing things is uh, the buildup to your drop. So let's say let's say that this will be the 16 bar buildup. This can be done. This can be done in a lot of ways. Uh, you can have eight bars of continuation from whatever you're doing in the intro. The intro, the, the way that I tend to do to do intros is that I'll have the intro establish the melodic progression of the song. This is where the the musical elements of, of the track are introduced to give you an idea of what what, what the structure is going to be like and that kind of thing. That that's what goes on in here. And then uh, we have a, basically a break. This is the beginning of the break. Um, sometimes you can have a break rise combo, which is what this essentially is, where we have eight bars of break and then it go and then eight bars of rise until you have your sixteen bar A part A of a drop and sixteen bar part B. We'll talk about this in a second, but um, that's one way of doing things. Another way of doing things is to have a full on sixteen bar break and a full on sixteen bar rise. That's fine too. I mean, again. Changes you can deviate from this completely. You can just do to whatever you want to do, as long as it sounds good to you. That's really what matters. What sounds good to you. But if you're going to talk about what sounds good to everyone else, this is sort of the usual thing that we're used to expecting. And part of the reason why it's so prevalent is because it just feels right for this style. Anyway, uh, these days I've, I've been going. I've been I've been doing uh, eight bar eight bar uh, builds and then eight bar rises. Um, I don't actually remember. If I did that for the, ch the song I'm going to show you, but I guess we'll find out when we discuss it. I'll identify that part. And then we have the drop, 16 bars. Actually, the whole drop is 32 bars. And I, I used to handle this in a very a very sort of long-handed way. What, what I would do, um, essentially, I look at, I look at the way that I look at it now is that it, the, six, the first 16 bars are kind of like the bass bonanza. This is where uh, it's mostly tonic. You know, the root note stays there. It's the, it shows off a bunch of sound design. And it just is bassy and big and loud and bombastic and not a lot, a lot, lot, not a lot else. And over here, on the B part of the drop, the other half, it switches gears in some way. And the easiest way for me to switch gears is just to go straight into the melodic part, where I will take the progression and the arrangement and melody that I have in the intro, and I'll, I'll put it in here, but with full levels, full, full wall of sound, all the drums, all the bass, everything together, all happening at once. That's that's what the section is. This is the everything part. Um. Other times what will happen is that I'll continue having um, 
uh, bassy drop. It'll just be a, of a different style, different range with different rhythms, different kind of things, whatever. There's a difference, but you know, it's still the same because we're on the same track. We don't want to have like you know two different songs in a track. That's not really something that uh, appeals to most people. Um, and then after that, we have the break and rise again. And sometimes I've just unabashedly taken the break and rise from the beginning and just put it in there. Um, some like I, I'll make like most most of the, like track creation track creation for any part um, is going to be about um, is going to be making whatever phrase there is and then copying it and making variations, copying that, and making variations, copying that, and making variations, and then eventually you have a whole part that is related to itself. It has a motif going on, but it's varied and it changes to keep your interest. That's sort of how I approach stuff, and so that's what I'll do here. I'll take this part and copy it over here, make variations, and then, then keep doing it again. And then I'll the same deal with the second drop. Now, I've often been quoted as saying that the second drop is where rules go to die. You can do, I mean, that's, that's the way that the way that I kind of look at, I mean, this is a very personal a personal view on a track making and music in general. So, if, especially for the bass music, the, the bass the bass music that I like to make, I see it as more of a statement of just like showing off sound design. This is kind of why that's what I do. That's what I like doing. It's also where I like listening to. I like listening to music that's like that. To that point, I don't necessarily view the whole song as being um, important, quote unquote. It's, it's obviously important, but like what I mean by that is that uh, actually it characterizing and it characterizing the latest uh, track from Scratch stream. If you've been watching that, um, the first half of the song is pretty regular. I have I have the drop going on and some progression. And it's cool, and then there's the melodic part and it's neat. And then there's a big old break and there's some cool stuff happening. And but then and then and then, and then the second drop it just goes nuts. It just like is unrelated to what's happening. And I view that I'm the reason why like my justification for that is saying that I already did I already did my do in the first half of the song. And so whatever else happens in the second half is almost just moot. Um but I will usually return to like the melodic part. I did in fact in this other song return to the melodic part. Um <clears throat> that kind of thing. Uh sometimes uh like the the the, the between the drop part can be handled in a ver variety of ways. The easiest way is just to do what we did here and just copy it over. Um, and actually one of the songs I'm going to release on my EP that's coming out pretty soon, I actually just straight up just put a, like a, a bar, like a, a bar, or just a break, just some weird interface and then just went back in the next drop. Like I just didn't even bother having a break just because again, what I described from what I, I make my music for, that just made the most sense for that track. Um, sometimes I'll make, I'll make the, uh, break kind of big, like I'll actually continue some melodic aspect or even introduce something, some new kind of melodic aspect that's sort of like a B part of the melody. Like we're, we're talking about the drops. We have the A part. A part is, you know, the basic business, whatever. And the B part is uh, like the same but different or, or just but different but related. And the idea with the melodic part. And then the break is kind of like, again, a, a, another step of different but related kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, I, I usually have the same amount of rise the second time as I do the first time. So if I have an A bar rise, then I'll have an A bar rise again. See, I could even, what I've done here is I've had, I have, you know, this kind of thing uh, with that. I might even separate, like, the break again. Like, this part we have actually, this is this is, this is more or less a bridge at this point. This is what would be referred to as a bridge. And the point of the bridge is actually pretty obvious. It's to get from the first half of the song. The second half of the song is why it's called a bridge. And this is actually something that's fairly present in regular music. Is like regular music. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep calling it regular music. Y'all know what I mean when I say that. And, um... It's sort of it's sort of optional for for certain time for certain kinds of music, um, kinds of EDM anyway, and uh, that's present in that, in that as well. But then like as long as the break, as long as we get back, we get back to the second drop. Really, you can do whatever you want. Um, and then you have an outro, which is mostly just uh, fading out elements of the song, in one way or another. I'm missing a bar there. Yeah, Let's see four bars. I would normally make this eight bars just because uh, essentially this is the break again and then is the break again, but this time stuff fades out. That's kind of how I usually I usually deal with it. Um, DJs like having big intros. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a particular term called the DJ intro and the DJ outro where the DJ intro, DJ outro in slowly fade in elements and slowly fade out elements way more than you would for what you would, might consider a musical, like a mus a regular just <clears throat> studio edit. Of your track, right? Like, cause you'll start with like, you'll start the song with just the kick drum by itself, and then just the hat adds in and just the snare, just some uh, percussion stuff, and then maybe some melodic. And you're like you're already like sixty four bars into your track, and you haven't even like played the track yet. 
but that's that's just to make DJ's life easier. And I've never particularly cared about that. So, and having tried to DJ my own tracks, I've paid for it. So there's you know there's something to be said, something to be said about that. Um, intros human can be pretty big as well. I, I made this one just 16 bars, but you can make it longer than that. So to kind of recap, uh, this is this is uh, your this is a pretty average basic song. Uh, arrangement, which we're at 130 right now, or about five and a half minutes in. That's that's about what that's about that's about, that's average. That makes sense. Uh, this is 128. This would have been almost exactly five and a half minutes. It's actually exactly five and a half minutes. That's freaky. I that's hmm. Yeah. All right. So to recap, we have an intro. In this particular case, it's 32 bars long. Just whatever, as long as it's a multiple of some even amount of bars. Again, that is even a rule that you can pull, so you can mess with sometimes. I've seen people do 12 bar intros, and it worked. Like, it, it worked okay. And, but I mean, even a 12 bar intro is still an even amount of bars. You know what I mean? Um, but again, the rules are only there to help you when you don't know what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing and you know what sounds good to yourself, then go ahead and do it. No one will stop you. Um, so we got intro of some kind. It's what, honestly what you do in the like the rule for intros is it doesn't matter what you do for intros. Honestly, that's why I do intros last usually. Um, then you have the rise, the build up section. The build up section is made up of a break, and it's referred to a break because essentially what happens is that it breaks it breaks down the track away from whatever was happening before. Usually a progression of some kind, the drop usually. And so it's a higher energy thing, a more focused, like progressing, progressing thing is happening. And it breaks down to like a big, a big let sort of lets the energy dissipate for a second. And then it builds it back up with a, usually a riser of some kind, a big increasing pitch kind of thing. Again, there it's more of a sound design thing, but that's just sort of the term that it's used. And then you got the first drop, 16 bars, that kind of thing, that sort of deal. Um, and then the next 16 bars are the B part. So the drop, the drops are, are divided into the A part and B part. And you got A part of the drop, which I tend to have it be, you know, the very bass heavy focused electric sounding electro sort of part, especially if we're doing 128, that's kind of what's going to happen. And then the, the B part is just different in some way, but still the same. It's still related to your track. I often accomplish this by using melodic progressive, progressive part, often the same material that I use in the intro. Then we got, uh, the breakdown, which could be. Uh, a lot of things. This is actually where the b real break is, which is literally in this case the same as the, the first break over here, with some variations just to simplify your job. But this part, this part could be a lot of stuff. It just exists to get you from this part to this part, and this is referred to as a bridge. And then we have a second drop. It's you could probably get away with just cloning it um, and then making variations, but sometimes it's good to just do something totally different here, just to trap, to throw it out a bit, throw it out a bit. That could be a lot of fun. And then the outros, which have the same sort of no rules, rules applied to them as the actual intro itself. I'm going to put the bridge down here to make it more visually clear what's happening. Come back. Yeah. So this is super ultra basic kind of like how this sort of approach, that kind of thing. You can, again, you can twist and bend these sorts of things. I'll actually show you how now that we're, now that we're done with the abstract. Let's look at a practical example of uh, how this track works, how this sort of arrangement works. So this is my track, Codename Hurricane, which was on my um, Momentum EP. Now, just by looking at this without listening to any of it, you can actually tell that, yeah, everything here is broken up into 16-bar chunks, but they're a little off. The grid is not, is not necessarily correct for a lot of these parts, and there's reasons for that. Uh, so here's my intro, 32 bars. Uh, this is where I establish the, the melodic uh, progression of the, of the song. And then, I, and then um, in this song, I actually have a whole bunch of four bar length little mini breaks that are sort of like, they're, they're essentially fills in between particular sections. In this case, in between the intro and the, the sort of the build itself. And here's a good example of the break. Like at the end of this section, there's a lot going on, right? There's a lot of things happening, lots of energy. <laughs> And it still follows the progression, but the energy is lower. It's broken. It's been brought down. This is also the beginning of the rise. The rise actually begins uh, all the way at the beginning of the first 16 of these bars, but essentially the rise is still the broken up into the half part, where the half of this is the break and the other half is the rise. 
because the rise itself doesn't really come come into its own until the section where you can see via these uh, automation clips. <laughs> And now we have the first drop. And again, here we have another sort of fill element. This is this is an inter- this sort of, this is actually a very interesting concept when you think about it because the whole point, the whole point of this particular kind of fill element is that it breaks the beat, it breaks the rhythm. If we're just blindly listening to this, we expect we expect this to follow through in the correct beat order, but it doesn't. Like we're listening to this, and we expect to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, and then it begins again. <laughs> And it said now we're, we're essentially adding in two beats that weren't part of anything. And now we're even off the grid again, off the grid here. But um, and yet doing stuff like that actually sort of engrosses a listener more. Um, this is this is more nit- nitpicky sort of arrangement things, but I just want to point out the effect of this, this kind of stuff. Anyway, this first drop um, is, you know, full of bassy bassness. It's all very focusing on the sound design and the progression is very muted. It doesn't really progress. It has little flashy elements of the progression. Every once so often, usually at the end of the, of the pattern itself, kind of throws it in there. But most of it is just super bass, just constantly. So that's you know very much that. And then uh, as big a big sort of common commonality in this track is that there's lots of uh, breaky fill elements like this again. And then we have the B part of the first drop, which has. It's essentially the melodic progression with all the basses, all of everything, and wall sound together. But it's the main melody and main progression of the whole track, as as the, delivered originally in the intro. And then after this, uh, again, we have another breaky fill, and then we have the actual breakdown. And then uh, I kind of integrate a bridge in here. Now, this is actually this actually is a bridge. It's still the same progression. It's still the same melody, but it's got, you know, it's, it's actually... some kind of thing in a moment but you might be noticing that there's no rise like you can't you don't see any of the riser settings like this this was the riser these are the risers but they're not there and this is an example where we can break rules if we think it sounds good and this is what i did where i had one of those breaky fills i just went straight into the drop afterwards The drop is actually very similar to the first drop, except it's just a little bit crazier. It has a little bit more wacky sound design involved. And it, it just does, it's still, but it's still overall the same structure, the same progression, quote unquote. It's mostly, this, you know, similar. And as well as should, because it's probably the same song. And then again, we have the breaky, breaky, fill break stuff. And we have the, the B part, which again is almost exactly the same, but there is actually a little change with the harmony added in later on. And by now, this particular style of uh, the fill element between sections is 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 predominant enough in the song that it's actually a part, it's a part of it. It's part of its distinguishing features. It's the fact that the song does that. Um, and like I mentioned in the other half of this video, the idea of the intros and the outros are kind of the lawless lands. I decided just to have a plain old a piano by itself for the outro. freaks out sometimes when I play it. 
and that's fine. It's not a very good DJ out there. It probably wouldn't fly very well, but that's that's there it is. It exists. And that's how I applied that concept to creating this song. Um, it was actually a whole video series about uh, the nitty gritty of everything I made about the song, uh, the making of Codename Hurricane. It exists. The thing that, that it's there, uh, it's on my channel. Um, but yeah, that's more or less uh, the same thing as what we were looking at in this, in this section here, just with the presence of the whole breaky fill things that kind of show up and mess around. But uh, those are examples of the sort of like the rule breaking aspect. As aspects that you as a producer are responsible for deciding whether or not it sounds good. Yes. All right, I believe I covered uh, the, the basic, all the necessary necessary basics to get you on your way if song uh, structure and, and the, like song design structure was not something that you're good at. Now you know. I, I, I suggest if you're new to producing and you want to know how to do stuff, I suggest you get used to the idea of analytical listening. And I might even make a video about that by itself. But essentially what that is, is that you're listening to music, you know, not so much, but yeah, this is cool music, but you're listening to it, you're analyzing it. You're listening to like w how many beats it does this, how fast it goes, like w what the transitions are, how it's arranged, all these things. Like analyze the hell out of the song, kind of like we did with this track here. We were listening to it, but we weren't really paying attention to what the song, how like cool, how, we, how cool we thought the song was. We were focusing mainly, at least you should have been, focusing mainly on what it was doing, all the sections, all the things. That, that's anal that's analytical, analytical listening. It's a little bit easier when you have the actual project file and you can look at it and analyze it. Um, but uh, you can do this for any any normal song. Just listen to it, count the parts, see how long they're doing it, and like just figure out what they're doing and that kind of thing. Like that's that's analytical listening, and it will help you um, to sort of acclimate to a style if you're if you're aiming for a particular style. I will also like to remind anyone watching this that if you have FL Studio 11, then in the cool stuff uh, folder which will open up as soon as my hard drive spins up. There's a lot of demo songs that are available for you to look at. And of course, among them are five that are mine. And these are all, these are these are interesting, uh, especially because some of them, uh, a few of them actually apply a lot of these rules, but they change them around a little bit and they do lots of, uh, they do some different things. So like there's, there are good examples of being they're they're still they still kind of fit the idea of the guidelines, but they do with them differently to kind of have a more creative edge to it, which is again your responsibility as a producer to do that, or you can not do that and get signed to spin in. Anyway, um, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.